Good afternoon. Welcome to this week's Small Business Town Hall. I'm so glad that you joined us, us today. Uh, my name is Sabina Matos. I'm the Lieutenant Governor for the State of Rhode Island, and this is our Small Business Town Hall. I want to thank Director uh, Matt Welburn and also Chris Barisi, because last week they were leading this as Rhode Island Small Business as a uh, Chris from the Rhode Island Small Business Association and Director Matt Weldon from DLT. They were the one that led the discussion last week uh, for the Small Business Town Hall. So thank you both. You did an amazing job. I want to remind everyone that as President Biden has the goal to have 70% of individuals vaccinated by July uh, 4th, here in Rhode Island, we're working really hard. We are already well past that goal, but it's still there are more individuals that need to be vaccinated. So please remember we need to get those shots in arm as soon as possible. Let us know if anyone around you that has a, a congregate setting, it has maybe a, a factory work, any place in which we could bring the vaccines, please let us know. We're gonna be posting the information right here. How can you contact us, okay? So I want to take um, this moment to tell all the small business um, owners that are watching that we're here to help you. We want to make sure that you reach out to my office. Um, the email for um, Billy Kepner is being uh, posted in here. Make sure you, you write it down and send us the email a message on how we can help you. So now we're just gonna go back to our tradition of having the directors um, come in and give us an update about how things are going. And we're gonna start, uh, actually, Ben, um, do we have Director um, Mark Hayward with us? Uh, we do not have Director Hayward at the moment. Um, okay. We do have Secretary Pryor backstage. All right, so let's go with Secretary Pryor. Uh, Secretary Pryor, so you're gonna start us off this, uh, this week. Uh, so good to see you and welcome. Good to see you, Lieutenant Governor. My pleasure welcome. to be with you. Thank you so much. Uh, we're very pleased with the continuing progress here in Rhode Island under Governor McKee and yourself, Lieutenant Governor Matos. Uh, I have a very brief update today, but it's, it's a really positive one. Uh, together, Lieutenant Governor, we've been tracking the economic indicators to see how we're doing and recovering from the COVID crisis. Moody's is doing a multi-indicator uh, set of uh, trackers on the states, the 50 states, they call it the back to uh, the back to normal index, forgive me, the back to normal index, uh, looking at how the economies of America are getting back to normal following the crisis. And I'm pleased to report that we are up to number three in the country. Rhode Island is now number three on their yeah. list of 50 states for the pace of our recovery. Uh, we're very, very pleased. Um, it is only South Dakota and Florida that are ahead of us for the pace of recovery. Now, wow. does that mean that every small business is back on its feet? Absolutely not. Does that mean that revenues are where they should be? No. Does that mean that individuals are no longer struggling? Of course not. Uh, we have significant uh, pockets of challenge. We have uh, people struggling everywhere. Uh, but uh, it's so great to see that we are leading the country above the national average, well above it. And we're number one in the Northeast, Lieutenant Governor. Number, we're one, number one on the pace right. of our recovery. Now, I, I want to be, you know, I want to be uh, first to note that we were in a really great economic position before we started. But some some other states were, you know, historically stronger. Mm -hmm. We have a ways to go even if we get back to normal fastest, we have to get to a next normal that's even stronger for small businesses mm -hmm. where we are a more durable economy the next time a downturn or a crisis strikes. I hope that doesn't happen soon, Lieutenant Governor, yeah. but we have a lot of work to do. We have to invest in affordable housing, which, which is a passion of yours. Uh, we have to invest in social services, human services for the the individuals who are struggling the most. We have to invest in our K-12 educational system. We have to invest in our economy. Uh, but I'm so pleased that we're number three in the country on the pace of our recovery. And I think the governor and lieutenant governor are leading an effort with a team that's making a real difference. 
So uh, I wanted to I wanted to express that, and then with your permission, just give a very very brief update on our relief grants. Yes, please. Okay, please. so we had uh, estimated a twenty million dollar program. We thought that twenty million dollars might be approximately the level of demand. I'm very pleased to report that we have now approved over 3,600 applications from small businesses for those $5,000 checks, totaling $18.4 million. Wow. So um, we're pleased that of those approved applications, over 3,000 checks have gone out or on their way out the door. They go in batches out of the taxation division of the state. Big thanks to the revenue department and the taxation division uh, for partnering to get those checks out. Um, you know, all of these processes are challenging because we made it very simple, which meant that it was potentially more subject to fraud. So we've been uh, making sure that we've been eliminating the fraud. That's why we, we're taking a little bit of time to check the applications to make sure that we have enough identifiable data from the recipients to ensure that we're sending real checks to real Rhode Island small businesses and they're getting out there. So yeah. Lieutenant Governor, we're pleased with that. Um, as we say each and every time, please let us know if you are out there, you've applied and either you've heard and you're trying to just interpret, decipher, make sense of the next steps that have been described from our staff. Or if you haven't heard, uh, please feel free to call 521-HELP that's the Commerce Helpline at 521-HELP, and we will get someone on it, get someone to manage your case and assist your business and get it done. We can't guarantee that every application application is eligible. We can guarantee that we're going to pay, pay close attention and put our effort in. So please feel free to call us at 521-HELP if you have any questions and you're an applicant business out there. Lieutenant Governor, that's my report for today. Well, thank you, Secretary, but I think you have a question. So please, there's a question please. for you, and I think it's very relevant because we, have, we have some plans around this. The question is, is there any plan in place to help the travel and tourism uh, sector? Uh, very much so. We are uh, hopeful that given the very preliminary guidance from the federal government on our stimulus money, that we will be able to devote some funds to travel and tourism to help uh, the hospitality and tourism industries re revive themselves after the hard hit that they took. Um, so we're hopeful about that. We are also hopeful that there are some application-based funds from the feds that are, are yet to come, meaning not just allocated for Rhode Island, but available on a national basis. As a matter of fact, Governor McKee and I were speaking about that this morning. Um, so we have our eye on what's yet to come out of the federal government. So yes, um, so far we only have very preliminary guidance from the feds on the $1.1 billion that we have received or are receiving. Uh, but the, the governor is in dialogue with Speaker Shikarshi and Senate President Ruggiero about the ways in which we might start to make allocations um, and is in discussions also the governor on the state level and on the federal level about more ways. So that's a long way of saying, absolutely, it's a priority for us. And we, we look forward to future months uh, when we can free up funds for these purposes. Thank you, Secretary. And also, uh, we're gonna have one of the conversations on uh, the 2030 plan soon about um, tourism, right? This is one of the topics coming up. We are in the next in the next couple of weeks, as a matter of fact. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Great. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the update, Secretary. We really um, enjoy all the information that you provide us. Just good information about the loans. This is good job on your part of your team. So thank you. Thank you for everything that you have been doing. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Governor. And Thank Rhode Island's you. on the rise, number three. Thanks, we're number Thank three. And the first one in, in, New, in New England, right? So. Number one Thank in you. the Northeast. Number one in number the one. Northeast. Number, number one. one. In the Northeast. We're number one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> thanks. Thank you. And so, thanks to Chris Parisi and the whole coalition. Thank you. So, Ben. Uh oh, Ben. I got into trouble a little bit around here. <laughs>
I didn't mean, I didn't, I did not mean to make you laugh on the stream. You, you make me laugh in the middle of the screen, but that's fine. That's a, that's good. <laughs> what we have next with us? Tell me. <laughs> uh, let's go with uh, Liz Tanner. Director Liz Tanner. Tanner. <laughs> Director Tanner. I'm so Director sorry. Director Tanner. Too, I'm, I'm too informed. <laughs> Director Tanner, tell us what's going on from the Department of Business Regulation. What is the latest update? You got it. Thanks so much for having me. Good to see you all. I uh, I have my last report about the task force. Can you believe it? Wow. After all this time, I have the last uh, information that I'll have, and, and hopefully I never speak of it again. But. <laughs> You know, I, th I think first we want to, again, say thank you, thank you, thank you to the businesses. Uh, you know, we have performed over 44,000 inspections and there will be no more inspections, no more inspectors after this week. Uh, so this this will be the last week with them. Uh, they are done. They have done a phenomenal job. They have done everything that we have asked them to do. And our businesses have ended one, nearly 100% compliant in every area, right? Yes. And it's just been such great partners in this whole process. And our business leaders have gone above and beyond to build consumer confidence. They want the customers to feel safe, but they've also created a safe environment for their employees, right? Which is just as important. And so many of them we found are keeping their cleaning measures. Uh, many of them are implementing, you know, depending on what kind of business it is, uh, certain things that their customers really liked. And if you're looking for suggestions on ways to kind of build or grow off of the pandemic pieces of it, just let us know. You know, we have uh, two folks that will be staying on for the end through the end of the month uh, because they're going to be working on a report for us and uh, that report is going to talk about the pandemic it's going to talk about the data that we have it's going to share all the information that we've learned uh, because again we'd like to you know keep all this information in case god forbid we ever need it again yeah uh, one thing that we are going to be keeping is our complaint and inquiry system so uh, the department of business regulation and some of our staffers have responded to over 19,000 emails and phone calls um, that were either a complaint about a business or very often a question, you know, how, who do I turn to? How do I get an answer? Whatever it might be. And it was such a success that we'd like to keep it, you know, because we've mm -hmm. never really had a system like that, that knocked down the silos of government that kept all that information in one place. So uh, we'll be converting the current COVID complaint and inquiry system into a neutral one. And it'll be a place that if there's a complaint about a business, you would want to share there, you can do that. But also if you have a question about a business, because you know, as many people think that the Department of Business Regulation oversees all businesses, it does not, you know, so there's plenty of the Department of Health or Environmental Management or, you know, they're all over state government. But if you want to send a, a question and you don't know who it goes to, we're going to figure that out for you. And so we've got now these relationships with everybody uh, across state government. We have connections via email. We can keep and track all the information. So we're really excited to keep that entire system uh, for businesses there. But otherwise, we're going to plan to finally get back to business at DBR and get back to some normal life. So I'll have to think about what I want to talk about each week. You know, the only thing that we are still working on that businesses might be interested in, I think the secretary um, or yourself had spoken to it, is the vaccination clinics. So mm -hmm. if your business still wants to have a vaccination clinic, please, 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 there are many opportunities. Uh, they are really trying to get into businesses where your customers come uh, on a regular basis, you know, things like grocery stores or markets. And we're really trying to emphasize because we've had some great, great, extremely successful events at some of the grocery stores and markets and places where, where people frequent often. So so that's kind of all I've got for a report and excited to, to share that we're, you know, we're finally at the end uh, for uh, from a pandemic task force space. And, uh, and, and again, hoping that we never have to talk about it again, but we'll be happy to share that report when we have it done, which will probably take at least a couple of weeks or a month. So, so that's all I've got for the week. Well, Director, I'm looking forward to that report. And I just want to thank you for everything that you have been doing with this task force. In your can-do attitude and problem solving, we need that so much in government. So I want to thank you for everything that you have done and for being willing to always find a solution and get an answer to our business community. So thank you, Director. You know, I so very much appreciate that because, you know, it was really hard to do this, right? You know, because um, these businesses are working so hard and trying their best. And so we very much took an education and training approach and really wanted to try to work with the businesses and not against the businesses. And I'd like to think that 
we did a really good job um, as far as doing what we could to boost up our businesses. So, so again, happy to see it wind down and happy to, to get back to work. Um, but again, just so ever grateful to our business community for working together and with us and uh, you know, doing what's best for both the customers and the employees. Thank you, Director. I'm gonna check with Ben to see if we have questions for Director Tanner before she leaves us. Yes, uh, thank you very much. We have, um, we have a we have a comment uh, that I think would probably be something that would be more explored uh, additionally. Tina says um, making sure all businesses are accessible to allow all Rhode Islanders to support local. You know, you said some things uh, that that we can talk about in the future now with business regulations. Um, uh, uh, you know, stopping to the, the uh, needing the talk about the the um, the COVID task force and and being able to get back to things like this is great. Do, is there anything that you'd like to say to that? And uh, and also, thank you, Director Tanner, for everything that you've done for the last year and a half. Well, just to say that you know something that I enjoyed doing before the pandemic was going out to businesses and asking them what they need. You know, what are their problems? What kind of red tape are they running into? Mm -hmm. And we're hoping to get back out there to do that again. You know, we want to ask you, what do you need? Is, a, is there a program or a service you need? Uh, what red tape are you running into that we can try to cut or try to make better? Uh, you know, we do both the long term stuff, which could take months to resolve. It might need a change of a law or regulation, or we'll just connect you to the right person because you're uh, unable to connect with somebody on whatever your issue might be. So really hoping to get back to that, to hear what the business community has to say. Because interestingly enough, you know, I, I had those conversations for a couple of years before, and now we're in a situation where the whole world has changed, right? So I'm just not quite sure what the businesses need, and we're really looking forward to hearing more. I, I do see Dina, Tina did a little, a little more about ADA compliance. Yep. So that's something I'd love to talk about. You know, are we seeing it in a particular sector? Or is it, is it, you know, what what is it specifically? And so we'd love to have a conversation yeah. to learn more. Yeah, director. So I had a great conversation with Tina. We're trying to work with her in identify resources, how we can help the businesses to be ADA compliance. This is a way in which they can have a bigger clientele once they have. Um, so we're going to be working with you and with Tina on that soon. Sounds great. Thank you so much again for the opportunity to fill everybody in. Thank you, director. All right, so next we're going to go to uh, Matt Weldon, who is the director of the Department of Labor and Training. Director Weldon, how are you doing? I'm great, Governor. How are you? Really good. Tell me what is happening in DOT. What is the latest things going on right now? Tell us. Sure. So the biggest change we've talked about a couple of times, uh, we now reinstituted the work search requirement. That means that everybody that's on unemployment or pandemic unemployment has to be looking for work or conducting business development activities every week. Uh, they have to keep their own record of that. We're not asking for that right now. And that's how most states handle it. Mm -hmm. um, what we're going to do is have people reaching out to them. And we're going to do that in email and through hard copy mail both. And we're going to say, we'd like you to submit your work search log to us for review. And you have 10 days to get that to us. You can do it through email. That'll be the best way. Or you could fax it to us because believe it or not, we still have fax machines. <laughs> Uh, the information will go out in both English and Spanish. And of course, we can provide assistance in any other language as well. Uh, but the point is that we're going to take a look at it. And if something looks like we need to follow up, then we're going to reach back out and schedule a review of that case. If people don't hear back from us, they should just keep requesting payments every week and there's no problem. We're still incredibly busy, even though we're way down from where we were at the peak of the pandemic. You know, we are six, six or seven times busier than we were before the pandemic. And so there's no way that we could interact back and forth with everybody every week about this. Uh, and so we're going to roll more information out about the work search soon, but everybody should know you have to be looking for work. And we know there are plenty of jobs available. You know, we talk sometimes about what is suitable work. That's a term that's used in unemployment. Suitable work basically means, is it something like what you were doing before you were out of work? So if you worked in hospitality and you've gotten an offer in hospitality and you rejected it for one reason or another, and it's not a COVID related reason, you may have denied suitable work, which means you're not eligible for unemployment. So we need to look at that. What might not be suitable? If somebody was an engineer and they made, you know, 60, 70, $80,000 a year and they were offered a minimum wage job, that may not be suitable. And so, you know, that's, it's common sense and we have to work through it. But right now, everybody should be looking for work again. The other big thing is we changed the law together and we now allow people to earn more money than they could before and still collect some amount of unemployment. We know in the first week that that went into effect, 
445 people qualified for a payment that wouldn't have qualified for a payment before. So the law changed and those people qualified for a payment because they're working part-time, but not quite full-time. Mm -hmm. We know another 590 people reported earnings that were over 150% of their benefit rate, which means they're basically working full-time. So 1,035 people have reconnected with the workforce in a meaningful way in the first week. It's not gonna grow that way every week. We will have weeks where the last weeks that may be more. And the data is really hard to track because we need to make sure that we're looking at unique individuals but we're doing it and we're gonna build out better tracking and reporting and we're gonna make sure people know about it. Another 4,500 people that had been working part-time were able to keep working part-time and take home more money because we changed that part of the law as well. We let them keep up to half of their weekly benefit rate before there's any impact on their claim. So more money is going into Rhode Island's economy every single week because of the changes that we made. And that's an absolute fact. You know, we're gonna keep talking about this. I'm going to do more sessions like I'm doing right now. I did a couple yesterday. I'm going to do more this week. I'm going to do more media and we're going to do more social media from DLT's account. Uh, and we're going to try to let everybody know every single person on unemployment can make more money working than not working. And here's the reason why. September 4th is the last certification for the federal programs. That's the pandemic unemployment program. That's the extensions that a lot of people are on right now. And it's the extra $300. If the federal government doesn't renew, and I don't think they will, then at, you know half of the country now has dropped off of these programs. And I think that those states were wrong to do that. And it's going to impact their economy in a negative way. Yeah. But you know we need to get people ready. And this is the one thing that keeps me up is that people are not really sure that this is going to happen to them. They think, ah, it might happen to somebody, but it won't be me. Mm -hmm. Come September 5th, if they're not reconnected with the economy and they don't have a job, they're not going to have any benefits the following week. And so that's going to be a big problem for them and their families. It's going to be a problem for our economy. So we need to do everything we can between now and then. We have like 90 days, I think, to get it ready. And we're trying to let people know every single week. So keep an eye out for information. You know, look on our website, get the info that you need. And I'm happy to talk to anybody anytime because it's that important. We need to get people back to work. Thank you, Director. I have a question. Um, if someone has been in unemployment and then while being un in the unemployment has been doing some training for a new skills, um, how would that be affected uh, for now when we require individuals to be searching for jobs? Does that qualify? So if you're in an approved training, which would be just about any training that we would work with or almost anything else, like an educational program, then you're exempt from looking for work. Right. because you're already on a pathway to another opportunity. So that, you know, it's not a punitive measure. We're not trying to harm people. Mm -hmm. We're saying you need to get reconnected now so you're not hurt in the fall. That's really what we're trying to do. But yes, if you're in an approved training, you don't have to look. Right, thank you so much. Thank you, Director, for this information. And I'm looking forward to joining you on the road. <laughs> thank you very much. All right, thanks. Ben, do we have any questions before um, the Director leaves us? Um, director, hello, first of all, and uh, I have I have one question um, to kind of for myself because not for myself, but from me, um, because after uh, your appearance on the small business forum last week, um, I had uh, I was talking to several people that I know that are entrepreneurs and um, and that were affected and are on uh, PUA. And um, they they had some questions about what counts as uh, business development um, requirements for 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 looking for work and what would like so could you just give some examples of sure. things? So just about you know, here's the thing. I'm from the government, right? And I do want to help people, but I'm not running their business. So they would know what they need to what steps would they need to take, or you as a business owner need to take to develop your business. And absent PUA or any program, if you were just trying to grow your business generally, what would you do? And for me, it's, are you engaging with other, trying to get more customers? Are you making improvements to your business model? Are you getting equipment? Are you researching things? Those are all things that you could do that if you keep a record of them would be helpful. And we're not, again, it's not punitive. So we're not gonna say, you know, Ben, I don't know. Yeah, I see here that you said you were checking out different microphones. You know, I don't know if that's necessarily appropriate. Of course we wouldn't do that. We're not the experts. What we would do is say, you have no records. You're not showing us that you're doing anything. And that's not what the program is intended for. It's a bridge program to get you from a period where you don't have work to where you're back to full capacity or hopefully you grow. 
And so what I want to know is that are you engaging in things to get yourself back on steady ground so your business can grow in the future? Thank you. Thank you, Director. Okay, thank yeah. you. So next we have Chris Parisi with us. And I want to say once again, Chris, thank you so much for uh, leading the conversation and, and my off week. Uh, last week, we had a great conversation with Director Matt Weldon. And I'm so glad to have you here and tell us how things are going. Why are you hearing from the small business community? Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Glad to be here. Thank you, Director Weldon. Uh, Matt for coming on the live forum last week. It was really helpful. It was perfect timing with the uh, bill just being passed. We had a lot of questions and as always, Matt was able to answer them eloquently as well as efficiently. So we appreciate uh, him hopping on the show last week. And next week, we actually have director um, Mark Hayward who was unable to make the program today. It's almost like he's just gearing up for next week and you know, putting all that, <laughs> all all that information. <laughs> exactly. So make sure to tune in next week. You can follow the Rhode Island Small Business Coalition at RI Small Business on Facebook for more information. But um, to get back to business, Lieutenant Governor, we're really appreciative of the efforts of Governor McKee, of yourself and the administration in general to vaccinate Rhode Islanders, you know, We've hit over 70%. We're probably close to 75% at this point. And that allowed us to open up the economy and return to somewhat back to normal. It's yeah. it's really been uplifting. I mean, you've probably seen it in the community because you're I see you almost every day in a different community. Um, and you probably feel it as well as you're talking to more small business owners and Rhode Islanders. Yeah. Um, but as Secretary Pryor mentioned, you know, even though our state, we're recovering well as a whole, number three in the country, number one in the Northeast, uh, which is great and um, really shows the efforts of commerce of the governor and everyone involved. Uh, but there's still some large issues for our small businesses that they're facing and still mm -hmm. some industries that really haven't quite recovered still. We want to make sure that these issues aren't left behind and those industries aren't left behind. And some of those issues, you know, hiring is still a problem. Um, amongst a lot of small businesses, it's not just a specific industry. So, you know, we need to come together as Rhode Islanders and, and get back to work, not only to just help our economy going forward and making sure our small business open, but selfishly for yourself to make sure that the, you have jobs because they're not guaranteed once mm -hmm. the federal bonus runs out, right? If, yeah. if everyone does the same thing and tries to get a job in September, well, the probability is that you're not going to be able to get that job. Mm -hmm. So secure that J-O-B right now to ensure for you know yourself and, and your family. And it, and it helps not only yourself, but also the small businesses and our state as we get back to uh, normal. So uh, that's still one of the top issues for small businesses. Mm -hmm. And there's, like I said, industry still hurting. You heard one of them, the travel industry, international mm -hmm. travel, United States is doing well, but the other countries are lagging behind. So that's not recovering as well. And we talked about tourism. So we're looking forward to you know, working with commerce in some type of economic recovery program to support, you know, these industries that have been hit hard and haven't have uh, recovered quite as well. Um, so that's kind of like the short term, the immediate focus. But as we're um, continue to advocate, we're also shifting our focus back to what originally is our mission to make Rhode Island a more small business friendly state. So uh, right away, that means looking at these regulations, licenses, these hurdles, the red tape, as Liz Tanner mentioned, um, that you know is involved with running or starting a business in Rhode Island. So if any of you listeners, small business owners and operators, you know, has an idea or has a regulation or has something that you feel that uh, the state can improve on, change or eliminate, email us at info at rismallbusiness.org. We'll take that as we're working uh, with the great folks at DBR, like Director Liz Tanner and OMB. You know, they've been proactive, you know, as Liz just mentioned earlier to say, hey, as a small business owner, as the small business community, how can we help you to make Rhode Island a more small business 
business friendly state. So we appreciate those efforts and we wanna provide that information accurately to our leaders in the state so that they can make that change uh, that we desperately need to make it a more small business friendly state. Um, and finally, we're also looking at economic development, right? So we wanna make it more small business friendly. We also wanna grow and, and we all know about that 2016 Brookings Institute report and they updated it in 2020 that outlined recommendations for our ocean state. Um, and we wanna make sure that the small business community is involved in those discussions and decisions and to make sure that as we're looking at economic development as a whole for our state, that we're balancing the big industries with also the small businesses and working together to make our state continue to grow as it has been over the past uh, five years as well. So again, if you wanna get involved, sign up at rismallbusiness.org or shoot us over a note, email us at info at rismallbusiness.org. Be part of the change, don't just complain provide solutions, let us know how we can help uh, our state be a more small business friendly state. I love your slogan. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> so, I just uh, wanna put a plug again, because Tina put some comments um, about this. If any of the businesses uh, would like to uh, be ADA compliance, we wanna help you. We wanna help you, help you find resources to make sure that you can be ADA compliance. And this, think about this, this is customers that want to come to do business that they cannot come because it's not ADA compliance. So let's make sure that we can fix that so you can do it. And also yeah. I, I'm, I'm, so technically my job actually is to run a marketing agency. And I wanna say accessibility is important in the digital world as well. Mm -hmm. um, brick and mortar, we obviously wanna be able to have um, those that have, don't have to have access accessibility disabilities to go into their place, but also think about a website. We got to make sure that your website is accessible to all of those that may have some impairments. So accessibility is in the digital world as well as the physical world as well. Yes, great, good point. In, <laughs> we want to help you solve problems. We want to help you find ways how you can make sure that your website is accessible and that your business um, also is accessible. So stay tuned for more information about that, okay? So, Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Appreciate all your help for the small businesses in our community. We see you in the communities all, all the time, all the day, and, and that's what's so important is to have that accessibility to their elected officials, so we appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. I'm really enjoying and going out and meeting new people, new, new businesses, and hearing directly from them. So thank you. And thank you for all you too. Okay? Of course. All right, Ben, do we have any questions? Are we good? I think we're good. All right. So with I, that, I just, yeah, go ahead. I don't, I don't know why it keeps going back to this. This is annoying. This has done this the whole the whole day today, and I don't know why, and I'm, I'm upset about it. That's fine. Right. No worries. Right. It's yeah. good. Thank you. I'll let it make sure everybody's paying attention. <laughs> so with that, I just want to say thank you to everyone that's tuning in today um, to this discussion. Remember, next week, Chris Barisi is going to be leading the conversation. It's going to be live also again in, um, in my Facebook page. Keep sending those questions, please. If you have questions, any issues that you're having, let us know. We, we are here to help you to solve the problems, to help you find solutions. So uh, please let us know. If we don't know about it, we cannot fix it, right? So I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Try to stay cool because it's really hot out there. Take care.